Okay, this is going to be a really interesting, intriguing guest we have today, Jack Griffith, and he is from Novo Combo, right? Is that correct? Yes, Novo and, Combo. And, and I wanted to, first of all, know how the heck he got that name, Novo Combo. Well, it's a funny story. Uh, Michael was into Novo, Nuvo, and Stephen was into Combo. And so they were trying to think of names, and I said, well, just call it Novo Combo. And, and but Michael wrote it in his book anyway. So we tried to name ourselves Soldier. So when we did interstate rights, we couldn't use Soldier. And so Michael came in one day. I got this name I wrote that I thought of that I wrote in my book. It's called Novo Combo. So we became Novo Combo. So how like so interesting. So to, so when did that group develop and tell some of the process mm -hmm. and all that? That was early 80. Um, I met the band in Miami. Uh, it's a funny story there. I answered an ad for a hotel gig to play in a hotel band. And um, female singer, the ad was rags to riches. And I go do the interview or the audition. And I play. And I go, yeah, you're pretty good, you know. And it was a big mafioso guy going, you give the girl whatever she wants, you know. So, I, you know, I, I played all those songs, the old R&B stuff, you know, and anyway, so they said, all right, well, we'll be giving you a call. So that evening I got a call from Stephen Dees and he said, hey, yeah, man, John thinks you're pretty good. Won't you come down and jam with us tomorrow? It was sort of a front for Michael and Stephen to have their auditions. And so, wow. uh, so yeah, I mean, so I went back down and we jammed for like four days in a row and then it's kind of like Michael story. He said, well, do you want to be in the band? I'm like, duh, yeah, let's go. You know, two days so, later, so I was it's in an the 80s band. So kind of tell this genre music. And what are you, what song are you guys most known for? Uh, probably Periscope and E-Train. Uh, Stevens had a couple hits. They were, they went top 14 with a bullet. So, you know, it's pretty good. And, um, you know, the rest is history about all that. Then we didn't last very long. We, we only were together for a year. And then they did a second album with another guitar player. And then, um, so then they wanted to get back together with the original band and do a new album. And so that's what we've done. So, so what, what were any of your stuff played in music? Cause you know, a lot of the eighties shows had music. Did any of your music ever go on any shows or anything? Oh yeah. We were on the Super Bowl. Um, a lot, lot of stuff, yeah. That's cool. So, and and so just, getting, go. Uh, you know, for a little while, we were, like, really on top of things. And then, you know, the band broke up. Like, we got hit with a lot of smart bombs and it broke us up. And so then, you know, we, we felt like we had unfinished business, so we got back together to do this record. Yeah. So tell me what type of music genre, when you're talking 80s, uh, is it the kind of who do you kind of pattern your music after? I think it was 80s pop. You know, we were we were trying to well, we were evolving in that sound. You know, I think it kind of came out of like jazz fusion, you know, with uh, pop rock songs and just a combination of it. Hmm. Yeah. OK. And so it's, it's, a, it's a mix of things. And so, uh, you know, I should, I would want to pull, I should have pulled up your original songs to see if <laughs> have I heard it. Cause again, I am an eighties guy. I mean, yeah. born 1973, so I'm 51 and uh, I love eighties music. And it's so crazy when they may remake these eighties, when you listen to some of these horror flicks in the eighties and stuff like that, and you go back and you're like, okay, now yeah. that's definite eighties. We were on MTV like like in the first month. Like we came on shortly after a video killed the radio star. Even we were we were right there on the change, you know. Really? Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. So that would have been cool seeing yourself on MTV. Oh yeah, it was great. Yeah, hearing your hit record on the radio the first time—that's always cool, you know. And why did the band break up? Uh, well. There was a lot of reasons. We had we had bad management, very typical, and um, just some internal conflicts. And then we had outer people pulling us away. 
it's just a lot of smart bombs hit us at once and, and you know music yeah, I understand business how those things happen music business politics you know yeah and when that happens it's tough yeah it was hard to keep it together exactly but, but we knew we were good and and like i said we always felt like we had unfinished business you know so we it like took us 30 years but we still got together and put this record together so tell me it's specifically nice. enough after life after novo combo what you did uh i started a group called revo bob i got signed with uh warner chapel music and i toured a bit i did it we did a long tour with the fix uh, i did uh, dates with uh amy mann you know i was actually managed by her management company the barbera brothers and so we did a lot of her dates and yeah and i got the publishing deal so i had a few songs covered and it was real nice and then after that did you uh, basically what else did you do in your career uh basically got married had a kid <laughs> opened my own studio was doing commercial business that sort of thing yeah what type of commercial business uh, regular TV and radio commercials, soundtrack commercials. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a, that's a big business still, isn't it? It's good business. Yeah. And with a friend, Randy Brown, Randy helped with the Novo Combo stuff doing all the early recording. We've opened up a new studio in Charleston, West Virginia, and it's totally nice. Totally state of the art digital room. That's going to be cool. Yeah. And do you guys do any podcasting in there? Because, you know, you got that state of the art studio. We haven't started anything like that yet. We're just still dialing to. our new room in. But You uh, need to because you could really, that's another revenue generator if you yeah, have a nice to. studio. We want to. Maybe we'll call you for some training. <laughs> hey, I, I'm, I'm, I'm available. We'll, you know, I'm in Pittsburgh, so I Sweet. drive out to Charleston. I have wrestled there as, back in the days when I was a professional wrestler. So definitely oh, yeah, we need to stay in touch. Very nice. Yeah, so I was a, I ended up all the way to Bremen, Germany, traveled half the United States and, you know, didn't make it to the big time, wrestled once for WWE, but ultimately I'm glad I didn't <laughs> because I retired young, left, became a teacher, then got back in the entertainment business and now I'm doing what I love, but I, it's really the the really a, an important thing is people can't create content. This is why Jack, you say you jump on a Zoom well, this yeah. could be all your stuff talking about specifically the band and things like that and putting out in reels and shorts. People are the organic reach for video content is through the roof right now. And it's a, it's like rolling the dice. You roll them, you see, oh, some got 20 views, another one got 2,000 views. And that right, is, right, right. And, and you got to just keep producing content. It's yeah. like, and I see that, People are busy people. The best ways through podcasting is they can really tell stories. They can come up with different things. And no, I'd be very intriguing. But I in studio stuff, man. Hey, if you come up with a deal and I could shoot down there sometimes, I could get a bunch of good video content out there and sure. help you guys out and we see. It's like I, I'm in conversations with a, another studio in the Boston region. I just got to catch back up to that. It's just like craziness. Everything is in this is probably the most crazy two week period to this election that we've ever seen oh, in our yeah. entire, li entire yeah. lives of what's going to happen next. Meaning with pe no businesses are taking mm -hmm. a stop. It feels like we're almost to January 1st and we're not. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Our earlier stop <laughs> gap. So hopefully yeah. normalcy comes back in November. Normalcy in so. November. That's what I hope. And we just kind of, yeah. so what do you think your for your fans of Novo combo back in the eighties? Mm -hmm. Cause that's going to be a big, big, part of people are going to purchase the album people that have been exposed to the music exactly How much yeah. of, are you keeping the new music versus uh, i mean old music versus new now with this release well ha half the record's new music it's stuff that that we made recently but um half of it's also stuff that we uh, recorded back then and nobody ever heard it and it was good music and we decided we needed to get it out there for people to hear it you know and are you familiar with Pete Hewlett there in Pittsburgh? No, I'm not. I never met Pete before. No. 
Well, Pete's a Pittsburgh boy. Everybody there knows him, and he still works around town quite a lot. Well, yeah, I definitely have to connect. You can just email me at Neil Haley. Not Neil Haley. Neil Haley. Neil Haley. Neil Haley. Uh, mm -hmm. He spent the last eight years singing backup for Billy Joel and touring oh, wow. with Billy Joel. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And That's of course, funny. our drummers, uh, Michael Shreve, the original drummer from Santana, and he's not bad. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. was I was talking, I was hoping to get an interview with him at one point in time, but I know he's not doing interviews right now. That's what well, I was. He will be soon. He will be soon. Okay, yeah. well, we definitely stay in touch. I love talking music, but I think the, the, the mixture of music and where we're going, because ultimately at the end of the day, music will never die. It continues yeah. to grow. You right. look at the way records are going now and all these different things. And now I was talking to a musician that just does like uh, stuff in Chicago. This one mm. musician, he told me, he said, dude, that live music is so hot now. And to be a band is a good thing, even for unknown bands, because right. people yeah. want them to perform live music's back. Exactly. Yeah. There's a real difference in live music and, you know, can produced music or right. computer produced music. And the, but, the, you, but like if you have parties, you have something, everyone wants to have a live band in some sort of way. So it's not the day say, hey, I'm going to go. Uh, so it's good news for you guys and continue. Are you going to be doing any touring? Uh, I don't know. We may. We may. It's kind of up in the air. We'll just see how the record goes first, you know. All right. So best place we, to go is go to Novo Combo's website. Is that correct? Novocombo.com. Yeah. Check us out. I, I'm going to go ahead and find those certain songs. Love to have you back on. Uh, I think oh. I have you. I don't I, When we stay off air, I'm going to get your email and stuff and have you back on to talk mm -hmm. more. Uh, it's you guys, because you were, th this is the thing. You I, I, that Novo Combo for having the run that they did it was so short should have more out there when it comes to their history because you right. did get the, the, in the eighties. But yeah, yeah, we had the hits. But, but now check you're back. Us out, man. Check us out on YouTube. There's a lot of product on YouTube. Okay, sounds good. A lot of songs. Yeah. All right, Jack. I appreciate it, sir. Hey, Neil. Thank you, All man. Right. All right. You're listening, watching the Neil Haley Show. And we'll be back in just a moment.